Hey guys, my name is Avery Williams. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Microchip. And today I'm gonna to be introducing you guys to the PolarFire F SOC. And also be talking about the new PolarFire SOC Smart Embedded Vision Kit. So the, the PolarFire SOC is a mid-range density FPGA and it has a 64-bit quad-core RISC-V hard embedded processor. It, the LEs range from 25K to 460K LEs, and it consumes 50% lower power than competitor FPGAs. So we, we like to consider it as a low power leader in the market space. You can run quad core uh, on the application module, and that allows you to run two operating systems at the same time. We call this asymmetric multiprocessing system. And that really enables you to be able to, you know, run Linux, bare metal, RTOS, and have them all exist in the same cluster core. We also have a peripheral of, of uh, peripherals that go along with the Polifor SOC, like two gigabit Ethernet Max that can be used for timestamping. We have uh, defense grade security and exceptional reliability that prevents errors against soft errors. We have uh, an area twenty. Uh, 20 transceivers that transmit a throughput of 12.6 gigabit hertz per second. And the most important thing about PolarFire SOC, it is, you know, we are going to production with this product and you can, you know, design it in 2022. We're in pre-production right now in, in November in 2021. So it's a great product. So please, if you want any more information, visit our website. So the, the smart embedded vision market is at an inflection point. Customers are designing in small form factors for vision solutions in 1080p, 4K, and 8K. And that, that also means that the processing requirements are increasing. So think about that in advanced image processing, machine learning, AI ML, and, and those consume a lot of power, which can, can kind of be seen as a challenge because if you're trying to de design in a compact and small form factor solution, you don't only really have the space for any of the active cooling, like heat sinks or fans. Uh, another avenue of it is that the purview of security and, and the lack of physical security, you kind of need features like secure boot and anti-tamper to make sure your device is safe and secure. So this is kind of the different applications for the smart and better vision market. And I kind of talked to you about some challenges. Now I want to talk to you about microchip can offer some solutions. So this is our PolarFire SOC FPJ fabric, and the PolarFire and PolarFire SOC ecosystem has an abundance of total system solutions that work well with different vision applications. For example, we have uh, IP that handle uh, expiring customer interfaces like uh, protocol conversion, image processing, and AI and machine learning. We have transport interfaces like Clorox Express, HDMI, 2.0, 10G Max, and, and, and much, much more. And if you remember, I kind of highlighted that the PolarFry SOC is, is really made to be a low power solution. So it can, since you get up to 50% low power, you don't really, you know, it kind of eliminates that active cooling element because you don't really need a heat sink or a fan because it's such low power that, power that it keeps the temperature low. So this is our smart embedded vision kit, and I implore you to people that are here to go check out our booth. It's right down there if you want to see the demo of the kit. But we really designed this, this newly kit for you know the smart embedded vision applications like edge compute, IoT, and AI ML. And, and with that in mind, we added some peripherals that we thought could really help in that market space. And with the PolarFire SOC, that also boosts its real-time processing capability. So what's on the board? So we have the PolarFry SOC FPGA chip, and that's a 250T device. We have two 4K cameras that's interface using MIPI CSI2. We have an FPGA museum connector, and that's Vita 57.1 uh, compliant. And then finally, we have a PCIe connection that can map to up to four lanes. We also have an HDMI 2.0 slots. We have two of them, one for receiving, one for uh, transceiving. We have UCSB 2.0 ports, two of them. We have a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module that's able to connect to different uh, devices that have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability. And then finally, we have the microbus socket that allows you to connect to our crutch and go system. And that's kind of designed by our system, our sister BU to be able to connect to the micro, Microsoft Azure cloud connectivity. 
And then finally, to close out, what else is on the board? Two four RJ45 ports, DDR memory. The LPDDR4 connects to the MSS system, while the DDR4 helps with the you know, high bandwidth imaging and video applications. The SCIO is used to enable an SD card, or you can connect it to the EMMC that's on the board. And I wanted to kind of talk about the, the, the background aspects of the demo before you guys check it out at our booth. So, so what's basically gonna, you're going to see is the video output is being fed from the, the live 4K cameras. And those video outputs come in, in raw data. So they need to be converted into RGB format. So we do that use in um, bare in interpolation. And with that, we also feed that through the gamma correction and image enhancement to, to get a much better, much cleaner image. We also have the, the capability, if you don't want to use the RGB, you can use the uh, edge detection mode to get that feature as well. And, and, and the video kit also, it's not just the uh, video input that you're getting, you also have the HDMI input that you connect to it. And with that, you have the HDMI frames and the uh, camera frames all being stored on a DDR, and you can display those parameters using the HDMI. And finally, the, the bare metal application is, is the, uh, the, sorry, excuse me, the, the RISC-V application is running bare metal, and that's used to configure the camera and, and help out with some of the processing aspect of the solution. So that's really, you know, what's going on with the, the video demo. If you guys get a second, uh, please check out our booth, and, you know, thank you for, for listening to my talk. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys.